morning, bitches and gentlemen. Today I've got on a legend, Trader Magus. He's going to help us make it all back. It was a promise of his. Magus, what up, brother? Yo, I love that intro. <laughs> bitches and gentlemen. <laughs> I actually stole that from somebody who this kid on TikTok, he like tattoos people, but he's very, very, very strange. And he'll start like every video with, what up, bitches and gentlemen? And it's hilarious because he's like this little funny looking kid. But anyways, happy New Year's. Welcome back to the show. Uh, for those of you who watch, thank you. I've had like seven streams total and I've had only absolute chats on here. And now I have Magus, who's one of my favorite traders. So welcome, Magus. Thanks for the intro, man. I appreciate that. So I know we were just chatting a bit. Actually, before we begin, shout out Femex powering the streams. Everybody trade on Femex or you're a fucking loser. I don't respect you if you don't trade on Femex. Sign up below. I'm also giving away $200 today. It's $100 if you don't trade on Femex. It's $200 if you trade on Femex. I'm literally going to write down a number on a piece of paper, and whoever guesses it out of however many streamers there is gets the $200. But, Magus, what's yep. going on, dude? Are you flat? Are you long? What do you think of the markets? Where's your head at? Um, so a couple things. Yeah, I'm, I'm flat. I have uh, no higher time frame positions. Um, just in, you know, I've got cash spread across different brokerages. Still, still really low crypto exposure on exchanges just because, you know, we don't know how things are going to play out. Um, and I'm not trading that actively, so I don't really need the money over there. Um, so thoughts are, I'm going to lean, going into the year, the plan is just to lean heavily into scalping. That's what I was doing the past like five, six months. Um, just because the momentum in the mar in our market um, has been more or less non-existent. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do the same plan going into the start of this year. Going to lean heavily into scalping whatever shit coins are moving at the time while I wait for volume liquidity to return. Um, what I was saying when, before we turn the stream on is I'm pretty confident that uh, as we return into Q1 and Legacy comes back online that we should get activity to pick up again. Uh, but we're not there yet this morning, <laughs> clearly. Riddle but, me this. Uh, um, before this current environment that we're in, what was your... Uh, strategy like what was your edge were you always a scalper or um you know were you playing continuation back in the bull market because i know a lot of scalpers specifically jim he would always you know whenever him and i would chat he'd be like i can't i can't trade continuation and there was a time when shit was only continuing were you ever a continuation trader or no yeah so uh, <clears throat> uh i consider myself to be really adaptable um so i actually made a thread about this um quick shill i made a thread um, about this like a couple of days ago where i went through every little section um in the past can i share your screen i don't think your screen is being shared uh don't you I turn can... it back on again no no, no i can i can see it here i can turn it yeah, on yeah go, go for it go for it right. i'm gonna just throw this in the in the chat box too if you don't mind uh, yeah absolutely but so i made this thread and i, I don't think people really um understood what I was trying to get across here, but basically the whole point of this thread was that, um, you know, and everybody's different, how you're, what you're going to be good at, what you're going to be bad at. Um, but you know, I look at trading like a video game and, um, in video games, every game there, there's the best way to play the game at the given time because of how, how all the development and all the patches and everything are, are working. Yeah. My screen's pretty blurred for them. For yeah. Some same. Reason. I don't know why it says that. Can Fuck. I change my quality? Um, you should be able to. Oh, I'm, um, yeah. I'll pull up. It only lets me go to 720, but that'll be better at least. What is it currently? Yeah. What what size uh display are you working with here? Oh, that's probably why I have a 34 inch that we're looking at right now. Nice hieroglyphs. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me see if mine looks like that when I. Give me one second. Yeah, yours is unreadable for now. Even if I, yeah, I bumped it up. <laughs> I see it on your screen. It looks like dog shit. Sorry, guys. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to do about that. That's okay. Share the links. Uh, you know, now share the links really to whatever. Um, <clears throat> if you want to try ending your screen share, and then I can. Yeah, let's uh, do that. But anyways. The thread. Tell me about this thread you just dropped, or you dropped a few days ago. Was this because somebody like recently said uh, scalping is unprofitable or something? Was that Algod? No. Uh, 
I did make, you know, that was the easy engagement bait. So I did make a thread when he said that, you know, to disprove him. Uh, but no, this is separate to that. So I'll do the owl god thing real quick too, right? Um, so the argument is uh, that like fees are too high and like definitely fees being high in crypto is a legitimate criticism, guys, that like our fee structuring is very, very high compared to legacy markets. Um, and that just basically means that you need to be a liquidity provider when you scalp. That's what that's what the takeaway should be. Um, if you want to be like, you know, if you want market buy, market sell to get in and get out of all your scalps, um, it's a legitimate criticism from him that you're probably going to lose because you're paying fees on either end and you're getting slipped on either end. Um, but basically, I, I how I scalp is like being a discretionary market maker where 99% of the orders they go through are all limits. Um, and that that's how you make it work. And do you the, use Quant Tower or each? Yeah, I mostly use Quant Tower to scalp. I use Encilical Terminal for higher time frame normally, and Quant Tower for for scalping. Nice. Um, but yeah, basically the the last thing to throw in there too is right. Like if you're trying to scalp Bitcoin, it's not going to work right for most people. Uh, you need to be literally a god to scalp Bitcoin right now. Um, you need to scalp and you need to scalp all coins. That, that's the the last takeaway. So use passive orders and you and don't scalp benchmark assets. Scalp beta that's going to move further. Speaking um, of beta, yeah, I know you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Bit is real. I don't know if yeah. you've been watching Lido, but um, ever since the Gen Spartan has been aggressively tweeting about it. The bid is real and it's a spot bid, which is the crazy part. Yeah, I was seeing that yesterday. Um, I haven't looked into any metrics yet. And the last 12 hours, um, I filled a small spot bag like two days ago, but I want to scalp this. I just haven't gotten myself to. Um, I don't know what funding's doing. I actually don't know what anything's going on with this token. Hold on, let me take a look. Um, how do you find your the alts you like to scalp? Um, I just used the, you know, the, I'll preface this. I tried to upload my screen again. I don't think it made it any better. Um, no, it really does look I, like high I, I used the scalper <laughs> scanner, um, made by the dude, Victor. Um, oh, is that what Charlie? Uh, yeah, that's what pretty much everyone uses right now. I think we're making, Charlie and I are making our own version of it. That's going to be more customizable. Um, but yeah, basically anything that tells you how much volume is going through and then, you know, honestly, the more more important than how much volume is going through is what the tick count is. Um, in my opinion, if the, if the tick count is high, it tells you activity is high and uh, that's what I need. So as long as there's some volatility and high activity, uh, oh, I can scalp these coins pretty aggressively with uh, pass borders. So this is actually my first time looking at this. I know he blinked it, but I was on my phone. So you can't actually pull up charts. It's just a scanner. Yeah, so on the top left over there where it says five minute ticks, click on that. And now you oh. see what to trade basically. So Alpha basically is... Alpha and Solana are what you would want to trade today. I think Alpha had some big liquidation move. Yeah, it popped people this morning. <laughs> What's that all about? I I don't know. I didn't take the time to look at the OI. What's the funding? But I'm sure I'm sure shorts are just getting clobbered and puking. Wow. <laughs> yeah there you go 42 the window oh, that's, yeah, on that's, solana. Solana. that's on soul yeah yep i was yeah it's, so my, it's two percent on on uh alpha yep i don't think i've ever seen that Is yeah that that's right? definitely much much higher than normal <laughs> Is that, <laughs> that just that tells a... you like that 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 will not stay at two percent um in my opinion, all, like, you know, without looking at any data, in my opinion, the reason why that's a 2% right now is just that just tells you that spot and perp markets just got dislocated on this move. Yeah. And they will they will stabilize and that will go away for sure. That's free money for somebody with big pockets right now, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but going back to the thread really quickly, because I just thought it was important. Um, Did if you, you drop guys that in curious, the chat? Check out link. Click on that thread that I linked guys in the chat. Um, I think it's really a really important concept to go over. So basically what they're, they're saying, they can't see the link and I can't see it either. So send it to me on discord and I'll, I'll, okay. I'll drop it, but keep going. Uh, so basically the, the idea is that, you know, I think about it like game theory point of view, right? Where there's a best way to play a game at a certain time. And those, the, the, the dynamics of what the, the best version of the game is are always changing, right? So when people come and they make a new protocol, when something happens with liquidity and legacy markets, right? Any major change, the game changes now for how we should play it. And um, basically identifying what the best version of the game to play is, 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 is huge alpha. 
Um, so in short, um, if you read through that thread, you're going to see I, tr I do different styles in different periods. Um, when there's momentum in the market, I'm not going to sit here and do low time frame, you know, scalping because the juice isn't worth the squeeze um, when I can do trend continuation to the upside or the downside. Like, right, last year it was all trend continuation to the upside. Now it's, you know, or last year it was trend continuation to the downside. Um, so, yeah, basically, you know, I'll completely stop scalping and only swing and then do the vice versa of it. Um, where like right now, you know, I wouldn't swing trade. I wouldn't even consider swing trading, um, unless like a really clean setup came for me basically. So that's like, that's giga alpha because a lot of people don't recognize when the environment shifts. And a question I get often is like, what's your strategy? And just like you, I'm pretty adaptable, but I recognize that I'm not the best scalper. Um, but in times when scalping is best, I just sit on my hands more often than I would in an environment shift and something that i've gone over in this fucking stream so many times and that i will continue to go over is if you recognize that your edge is no longer efficient in whatever environment shift we get do not burn your capital trying to adapt to that edge maybe sit if you have enough runway sit for four months six months whatever it is the environment will shift and your edge will once again become you know efficient or whatever Whatever you're better at, just wait for that time. And that's something that I also have to remind myself because I get so impatient and then I'll have periods where I know I, I'm not going to prevail and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll fuck around and be like, ah, so that's, uh, that's why I just simply like, you know, to trade smaller degenerate accounts and, uh, and then I'll like, you know, I'll scale it up when shit gets more aggressive. Um, that being said, I wish you could fucking share your screen and it would not be in hieroglyphs so that I could see some of your setup, but that's not a worry. I'll, I'll try um, to mess with it. I, there's got to be a way to get this right. I also know if we if we stream through Discord that it will it will work. Oh, you want to try that? If you don't mind. Not at all. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess do you want to just me. abandon the? Uh, the restream thing because we'll be able to voice chat in there as well or i could just start the video call on here and then turn off yeah, just the mute audio me. yeah here take it and then share your screen and then i should be able to just drag it over and also now that we're getting to it if anybody wants to drop any tickers and uh i'll start pulling up charts as well but okay, um, it should be really clear now. I'm like on 1080, 60 frames. It should be clear. Yeah, there we go. All right, here. But yeah, just last closing thoughts on what we were just talking about. Cause I think it's a really important concept. Start to recognize, guys, that there's different. You know, you can. There's a lot of different words, right? Where you want to call it market environment or different regimes. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, you, recognizing that is for, for discretionary traders, even for automated traders, right? Because you need to know what environment you're in to deploy the right mechanical system. So re recognizing when momentum is there, when liquidity is there, when it's not, you know, these kind of concepts, um, those are the, really the core things I look at with, for environment recognition too. I mean, I'll, some alpha for you guys, right? Paying attention to volatility, paying attention to liquidity, um, you know, basic structure is price compressing. You know, it's obviously not going to be expanding if you're it's a low ball. So paying attention to those concepts and then comparing the benchmark assets against the beta assets, um, really, that's pretty much all I need to know how to trade. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> the the, the shitcoin tickers are coming out already. <laughs> oh no, they're rolling. Uh, I don't know if you're messing with your screen or not, but it says that you're still on your tweet. Are you? No, I, I was. I was on my other monitor. All right, cool. It should be working. Still. What's your monitor setup, by the way? Drop your drop some alpha on uh, your. <laughs> uh, okay, so I can't I can't show every tab on here, but we can I can show all the trading view ones. So like, um, this is my holy fuck. The S and P is getting brutalized right now. Yeah, <laughs> the fake out this morning was hilarious. Uh, um, and crypto's following as well. Yes, crypto benchmark. as expected. Um, so this is what I call my multi-scan. Um, this is this is where I do all my benchmarks. Um, so on the left, Bitcoin. In the middle is ETH. The right is S and P. 
um, on the top, right? I have all my higher time frame um, scans with the VWAPs and then the lower time frame scans, right? So this is like uh, like a 12 hour up here and all the higher time frame ones and the lower time frame ones are all five minute. This isn't something I'm actively trading off of. It's just something that I do, you know, mainly when I'm scalping uh, shit coins and various things, I will, uh, I will, you know, this is basically a part of my scan. So, you know, step one, I sit down for the day. It's probably the first thing I look at most of the time. Um, it's, you know, compare structure between the two um, and generally just get an idea what the S&P is doing because everybody knows whatever the S&P is doing is probably what Bitcoin is going to do. So um, that's pretty much that. Um, I have a Bitcoin scan. Uh, I recently switched over to Sierra, so this isn't really that important for me. I would really only use this for like high time frame. I used to scalp off of this for, uh, you know, quite some time. Um, like, you know, a setup like this. Here you go. Some free alpha, guys. Um, you get uh, some basic volume analysis and open interest. You know, you got you guys know that you can do open interest. Yeah, I was about to say, how the fuck did you get open interest on TradingView? It's built into TradingView now. It sources it from Coinalyze and it's accurate. So As of when? A couple months ago, man. What? Yeah. It works too. I've tested it. Doesn't um, lag? No, there's no lag. It, it works perfectly fine. And uh, I'll even leak some more here in a second. But first, I'm going to say um, I don't really like the CBD, though. So TradingView does have a uh, built-in CBD now, uh, but I don't like it um, personally. But I wait, can you it. click on it just so I can see it? Yeah. Uh, actually, hold on. We'll just, go to a, we'll just go to a different slide where I have it already loaded. And why don't you like it? It's not accurate. Uh, maybe... Maybe it's not. Okay. I don't have a chart with it. So I turned it off because I didn't like it. Um, but basically, if you just go into your indicators, type in CBD, it's going to be the first thing that comes up from TradingView. The reason why I don't like it is because it's not accurate. It, uh, TradingView doesn't calculate um, delta properly. Um, so it's basically, how do I word this? Um, so everybody should be familiar with what basic divergent structure is. Um, if price is going up and making a higher high, or excuse me, if price is going up and making a lower high, but CVD is going up and making a higher high, that shows us that the ask is absorbing the aggressive bid, right? Um, this is a standard div of how I would want to trade. Unfortunately, the CVD on TradingView doesn't produce, this is a regular div, you know, like hidden, the difference between regular and hidden and shit like that. Um, the CVD on TradingView, it only produces hidden divs. I, I, I've, I have like a record of like one legitimate Div. So they do the opposite where price makes a higher high and CVD makes a lower low. Technically, it's a div still, but I only trade regular divs for absorption. I don't like this style because technically this doesn't really represent true absorption. It's just showing you a divergence between price and CVD. This first one is showing you that the ask is actually soaking the bid, which is actionable. So I'll digress from that. What are those bands called you're using? These are just VWAP standard deviations. So this is a daily VWAP with standard deviations. What do you think of this fake out this early morning? Um, On benchmark. So we'll come over to Bitcoin really quickly because this is basically my plan and that I was going over in the Paragon on Sunday was that I'm trying to catch a bid down here. As you can see, I have two alerts. Um, so... This is the, the macro range that we've been in for, you know, almost two months now. And um, I'm trying to catch a bid um, off these lows here um, to basically do something like this. Is that 16.4? 16.4, correct. Yeah. Something like this um, is what I'm hoping to do. I want to catch, I want to wait for the downside to come, wait for it to recover, bid this shit. Uh, FTA is in like, you know... 17.2 FTA, um, and then realistically, you know, probably get, it probably struggles around 17.6. Um, so yeah, this is like kind of the play I'm looking for. I would consider this to be a pseudo swing in the sense that this would take like probably a week to play out. And for me, a week long trade is a swing these days because I don't hold positions for very long. Pull up uh, Solana for us. So I had a very similar long for a Bitcoin, but it's currently in play. Uh, the lows I wanted to get swept did not get swept fully and so like slow wicked in. Um, so I'm currently long and I'm targeting 17.6. Uh, stop is... <laughs> this chart. 
Holy fuck, Solana! No, but pull it up. Pull it up on the on a lower time frame. Ew. Yeah. What the fuck? This is a 15 minute. Yeah. No, you're looking at FTX G. There you go. <laughs> Why do they even have price action anymore? I think that they didn't turn off some of their algos. All right. There we go. It looks like the short squeeze of, of the decade is coming. It looks like the what of the decade? The short squeeze. Yeah. I know I was watching some metrics the other day and a lot of shorts were piling on at like $10. And I was like, this is not going to end well. I can confirm that potentially. <coughs> BRB. Everybody sick out here these days. I would, don't know necessarily if there was that many shorts coming in. It's hard to say. Oh, we're on 15 minute. Let's drop her down. Sorry, I smoked a joint last night, so I had to spit out something nasty. Um, how does it look? I mean, certainly. Wait, on so can you frame. get OI for any Binance coin on yeah. TradingView now? It's not yep. just BTC. In, any of the Binance perps you can get it for, and that's pretty much it that that's works, so I believe. Good, yeah. But honestly, that's all we care about because Binance is the, the only shop in town that is doing the real volume these days. <clears throat> so at first glance, I mean, this this leg up was just you know pretty obviously somebody getting clobbered, some some short oh, market shit. puked. And probably one dude moved price 20 percent off of Coles in their short. Uh, he had something like something like eight hundred eight hundred thousand soul short, <laughs> and he puked it. So I, I don't really see too much signs of alpha. Uh, shorts opening in the ten dollar range. I guess maybe some over here. It's hard to say though. You know, a good lesson for the stream viewers, guys, is just open interest going up and down isn't necessarily uh, that accurate of a view of positions opening and closing. I, I really don't like the way the people on Twitter talk about OI um, because if you get, you know, you'll see people post uh, an hour an hourly chart with open interest and talk about positions opening or closing. I'm gonna go ahead and say right now that there's no there's no accuracy when you're zoomed out. And you do open interest stuff. Uh, you got to be really zoomed in. Uh, this is something I was going to show earlier, though. This is actually kind of spicy, guys. Um, where is my open interest? Oh, it's all the way up here. Where's the CBD? Fuck, I'm on the wrong one. We'll go to Bitcoin because I know it'll work on Bitcoin. <clears throat> um, so on CoinWise, the lowest you can go is one minute. Um, but what I've learned, um, I learned this scalping altcoins the past couple of months is that you can actually go to much lower. So for example, one second, you still get the open interest analysis. I hope you guys can see this. You just get gaps and ticks. Yeah. So unfortunately it doesn't look good, but the information is still there. I can still see this is long spuking, right? Yeah. So what I'm getting at is, you know, I know this is disgusting looking guys. I know, but this is for sure more accurate way to, to, to view positions opening and closing than the majority of the way that people are showing you. Yeah. Um, cause I can see with certain, you know, with, with this, there's no room for error. I know a long puke here. I know a long puke here, right? There's no room for error. When you, when you go into the higher time frame and you're aggregating more and more information together, you're, you're more and more likely to, to be wrong. Um, basically. So I don't know if I would necessarily recommend any of you guys use this, but it's something that you can check out for sure. And I, I do use this for scalping. Um, so I know that a one second chart looks disgusting to you guys, but when altcoins are moving, I actually do trade on the one second because um, it's the closest representation to a tick chart. Um, and then I will, I will trade actively off of this concept, right? So seeing a huge puke is a reversion signal in itself um, for me. So 
hopefully you guys uh, are- yo they're asking you to turn up your brightness because it's hard to see but at the same time it's probably just because we're like streaming through discord and restream and um, i don't think that this is going to help what if i put it on black that's the contrast yeah. that'll probably help yeah Oh, let me, I didn't even know that there was questions coming in. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything. <clears throat> Someone said, is it $800,000 or 800 k Solana? 800000 Solana. Yeah, it's in. It's not. So, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of money, right? Is what that means. Wait, so can you pull up Alpha, too? I want to see uh, Alpha on your setup here. It's probably going to be a similar similar squeeze to what Sol was doing, huh? Um, you can't hear on. my AGGR my going off. Chart up, so, let me, let me get over to all coin chart to do this. You can't hear my AGGR going off in the background, right? No. All right, cool. Let me just move that out of the way. Oops. Hold on. We need to we need to upload a different. There we go. This is the actual one I would scalp all coins off of. Uh, alpha. A uh, key thing is too, guys, uh, for the stream viewers, when you want to do the open out, uh, the open interest stuff, you got. I know it sounds stupid, but I run. I've run, seen a lot of people run into this. You got to make sure you're actually on a perp contract. If you go to a spot, yeah. obviously, OI is not going to work. Uh, let's go to like one. Let's see. now. This is, I guess, this is one of the altcoins that's moving a bit right now. But this is what you were asking for. Let's see, let's see if we can see the open interest changes. So I mean, yeah, it, it's it's ugly for sure. But you can see that like throughout this area, you know, positions are opening. And if I zoom in more closely, I can I can find that there's definitely was like longs opening. Right. If 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 OI is ticking up throughout all this and price is going up on the one second, pretty safe to assume it's majority longs opening right here. Are you trading uh legacy or equity Tesla, Apple, any <clears throat> tech, anything? Uh, nice. no, I don't, I don't really do individuals. Um, something I'm going to start to incorporate in, um, is going to be trading the indexes. So I used to trade, uh, I used to trade the mini S and P and the mini NASDAQ back in 2019. Nice. Uh, I'm going to probably incorporate them in, um, because I'll show this screen too, that you guys can't see. I switched back to Sierra for, for Bitcoin and for altcoins recently. And, um, it's kind of a, a given that if I'm going to use Sierra, I should probably trade trade a legacy as well i'm losing you for a second here what's that your your audio is getting all weird oh i don't know just chopping if anybody else can hear that let me know but continue i just was saying that it seems like an obvious play for me to trade legacy um because i can just copy my chart book over and uh and trade legacy and uh, sierra will actually let you execute through them um, so that was oh, nice. originally how I got, sorry if the audio is bad guys. I don't, I don't know why it is. I'm not, I didn't change anything. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so I used to be able to trade, uh, I used to trade Bitcoin through Sierra. So back, back on the BitMEX days, um, I would have my pretty little setup like this. And then I had a depth of market on my screen that you guys can't see. I used to actually execute through Sierra when I traded Bitcoin. And I didn't really realize it until I couldn't do it anymore but that was the golden days for me because i had sierra and that was all i needed i could do analysis and trade execution through one platform um when the, when the bit exchanges came through all of a sudden everybody had to start incorporating an additional platform um, yeah your, um, like, your audio uh, is tripping again i don't know man i don't know either hold on let me see if it's uh because i'm running discord at the same time i feel I feel like we should end this stream thing and just do uh, do it through Discord. To be honest, I think if I see it. the issues I'm streaming through Restream, it would it would fully oh. it would nuke the stream and it would start a okay. new one. I see, but now you're fine again. So okay, <laughs> so I'm fine now. <laughs> Bro became the monic. Um, I want to pull up a chart really quick, just because I think it's going to happen sooner than later. I don't know if you're watching. Um, legacy call, but so this Tesla move that happened recently, I'm pretty giga upset about. I was fucking I preaching to the choir that this was this was going to occur, and I I just missed the move by being lazy. And now a very similar structure 
is happening amongst another tech giant. Um, and I'm like 100% sure it's going to happen. Um, probably, you could probably buy non priced outputs at like, I don't know, 90s, 200s. I think this is going to happen way faster than we expect, just like Tesla did. And there's not going to be many, you know, uh, many pumps to add to. This is how much this do you think the Tesla up, play was now. based off of Elon just like having kind of negative PR lately too. That was something well, he was I, also just selling. He was selling, you know, Tesla himself. Oh, true. So, okay. you know, he sold I think like fucking several billion dollars worth of Tesla, whatever the number was. It was an extreme number that was disgusting to even read. I don't remember what it was. But outside of that, like market structure wise, this is hideous. You know, it's exhausted. Yeah. It's it's on top of that. You're it looks in, like Bitcoin at 58K, honestly. Pretty much. It, it's <laughs> honestly even more obvious. Like, this doesn't even look propped up at all. This just looks like it's going to go. Um, you know, it could rally up to 130, 135 again. But the point, point of the purpose is I don't trade margin on legacy, but I probably should. Um, options have way too many variables against us. But yeah, Apple looks like shit. Uh, this looks so very similar to that structure that I was seeing in... Uh, Tesla, and probably most tech has this very similar structure. So yeah. there's there's not you know there's just fucking lower highs and you know the bottom breaks out, bottom breaks out, and it's just this was a lot faster than I expected. Um, but you know you get the you get the point. Um, this is going to go much lower. So which makes me want to shop for puts, uh, but I'll do another time. Um, Someone in my stream took the Tesla short the other day and actually flexed the PL to me on DMs. You're a legend. And if you're in this, take the Apple short too and double up and you know, send me a tip because fucking <laughs> I'm just leaking alpha for you now. Um, something else I wanted to look at. What was it? Fuck. Oh. There is no bottom on coin yet, but I'm gambling. I'm gambling on my children's future. <laughs> I'm gambling on my future. Um, I have a prediction that this will bottom out in 2023. But I don't even want to talk about it now because that's just pure speculation and gambling. So let's move on from that. Um, from a fundamental standpoint, I like the idea of owning Coinbase, honestly. Yeah. I don't think Coinbase is going anywhere. And Brian exactly. Armstrong has proved that. They're... <clears throat> they're they're buddied up with uh, the rule makers and stuff, so that tells me that they're yeah you know they're going to play by the rules and they should be around for a while. And they were some of the most responsible uh, players in the last quarter, which is hilarious. Uh, you know, you it, it's well, unironically the bar enough. Set very low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, apart from their apart from listing shit coins and their insider trading, apart from that, they they're pretty solid. But yes. that's the only real blemish Didn't they have. Somebody somebody got put away for that, no? Somebody I'm pretty had... sure, yeah. But that's a total <laughs> scapegoat type scenario, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, throw somebody under the bus. Yeah, I'm guessing you do you have any spot exposure at all? Like do you hold like cold storage no. you don't you don't touch at all? I mean, I have like a little, little bit of cold storage, but it's like nothing. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> I've uh I've been yeah, heavy risk off for a while now. That's fair. So uh, my best trade of my life was, That's fair. Was, was hedging at the top and then just selling all my shit and just watching. You know, it's crazy because I basically traded it perfectly, but there's all, all these extra risks that, you know, you don't think, get taught to account for, like your exchange and uh, yeah. <laughs> a Ponzi scheme, you know? Perfect example is uh, Trader Main. He turned a very small account, like 20K on something into millions and change, and he, it was all in FTX. Yeah. So, like, imagine doing everything right just to get fucking swept. That would be giga unfortunate. But um, any tickers anybody wants to see? I know it's going to be a bunch of shit coins that are probably all looking awful and that aren't going to go anywhere for the next seven months while they range in hell. But I'm willing to give people a chance. There's one shit coin that is worth looking at right now. And I, Which? I can't show it that much because I didn't buy it yet. <laughs> but <it's> Litecoin. <laughs> Honestly, Litecoin. I'm long Litecoin, but very small. Yeah, I need to get exposure, but yeah, Litecoin's gonna go up. 
I don't know why this purple line is here or these lines are here. Wow, I love going back and seeing price action from or price action that I attempted to fucking deduce from the 2021. That's hilarious. Yeah, oh, when painful. like I'll but, have lines that are from 2016 or 17 and then they like you're seven years in the future and they're working still. It's hilarious. I can't wait to watch this vlog back so I would hear myself be demonic, honestly. I'm gonna replay this shit instantly. It sounds crazy. I'm just I'm just like standing through at this point, but it's like you sound fine now. It's back and forth. It's back and forth. I'll tell you when you sound I, I think it's so anyway. gotta be some combination of that we have the two streams running at the same time. I don't know. Oh, are you streaming as well at the same time? No, no? I meant oh, like... you still have Discord open. No, I have you muted on there. Um here, wait, let me pull up your did you still charting over there? Yeah, I can. If yeah, I can do shit coins. Yeah, let me see. Let me see some. Uh, let me see what you're eyeing out for Litecoin because I'm long and I need my narrative to be fed some more. Some more uh, hopium. Well, I don't have like a fully. Where like, are you adding? <clears throat> Let's see. Where would you consider adding that. on LTC? I would say 71 is a nice place to buy. Because you had that inefficient move, which was just pushed over on the weekend or like yesterday, I think. There's this whole inefficient. Is it? It was on the second, yeah. And I think that gets filled in. I don't think that holds from like seventy one eighty up to. Uh... <clears throat> so technically, there's a low volume node that is trading into right now. Um, so that would suck if it if this is where support was found because it's not as low as I'd like to bid, but um, potentially could be finding support now. Um, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, closer to like 69 or 70. Yeah, maybe like four, another $4 down. And then you probably, that's probably your bid zone, I would guess. Yeah, so I have laddered 71 to 70.5, and then I get uncomfortable. That's pretty much my entry, 70.5. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I think, I think this thing's going to go up. And talking about old levels, all these little black lines on my screen are like years and years old, and they just work. It's so stupid how TA is. That's exciting. I hope it fucking goes up to the 100s again. I was going to TP this much sooner than, than the 100s, I'll tell you that much. No, I think I think this thing should be able to go to 100 minimum. Um, and then the strategy for me is always the front run. So if I think like, lower 100 yeah. at the end then i front run at like 96 and 97 types you know that's how i do it but realistically man um as long you know the, the, the only caveat here is that you need the rest of the markets not to fuck this plan up but as yeah. long as the rest of the markets give this thing breathing room to run then i really think that it could be like a multi-month run up where it goes up to like 150 or some shit like that realistically um just because the happening like it's just it when is the happening uh i don't even know it's it's like maybe like six months away or something like that i don't actually know i could google it um what was price i don't even remember my memory so jogged what was price action six months prior to btc happening like was that wait was that so bitcoin doesn't doesn't do it the same way like litecoin structure going into the happenings is always bullish and bitcoin structure going into the happening is normally not bullish um, so if we go over to Bitcoin and go to high time frame, um, I don't remember exactly when the happening took place, but it was like not that far before the dump. So like, I'm pretty sure the happening was in like the first part of 2020. And then we went down a shitload, um, before we went up. So with Bitcoin, you don't necessarily want to get long prior to the happening. Now I'm also talking very outside of my comfort zone, right? I'm not like uh, somebody that trades off these kind of things that much, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure the happening took place in this little micro uptrend up here. And I remember thinking, <laughs> uh, until we started to roll over, it was, you know, we're going up to a million right now. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, Litecoin's different though, where Litecoin actually is bullish into the happening and then post happening it goes down only, where Bitcoin's the opposite historically. Bitcoin will be choppy or bearish going into the happening and then post post uh happening it goes up a lot normally. They have like reverse, they have like reciprocal patterns. I'm a fan. I just I just put together a little 
I just opened up a, a Litecoin chart and then saw that I had some structure set up that hadn't changed much. So I extended it further on the horizontal time frame, and I had myself a new play. Even though I was already long LTC, I can I have an area of giga comfort on adding. So thanks for bringing that to my attention. What I really want to add is Lido for spot, but if it retraces that entire move, then I'm not comfortable at all, which it seems like it would. Something I have to remind myself in these types of environments is that a lot of things will fully retrace. For sure. Uh, and, something I could add to a bit of useful education right here is around VWAPs. So um, nice. guess what just happened, guys, right? The year just reset. So that means that all my time-based VWAPs reset. So at the beginning of the year, this is the, the only time where this ever occurs, um, where you're going to have all your VWAPs all simultaneously overlapping, right? So currently my yearly, my quarterly, my monthly, my weekly, they're all the same VWAP. Um, so what I'm getting at is that paying attention to VWAP structuring at the very beginning of the year is, it's like, I don't know if I can say retard. So it, it's like idiot proof. I said it. You anyways. can say whatever you want on my streams. Okay. I'm not that guy. So it's, it's honestly retard proof how, what VWAP structuring is early on. Um, because it's as simple as what is the slope of the VWAP is price trading above or below the VWAP and literally you bet on continuation of whatever it's doing. And so basically, um, currently VWAP structuring is bullish on, on Litecoin when you look at it and it's not on Bitcoin. Um, so honestly, free alpha right there, pay attention to VWAP structuring the first couple of weeks. It's very indicative of what Q1 is going to look like. Well, well, well. Dude, the more I look at Solana, the more I want to fucking. Oh no, Hasak is posting the Solana spaghetti tweets. <laughs> oh, there you go, guys. It's going to go up now. One of my favorite lead indicators in the bull market was uh, Hasaka tweets. Like if I entered a position and on like let's say sushi and I saw Hasaka follow up a tweet with like a Dalai Lama, I knew I was gonna be safe. It's been many, many, many moons since then. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm probably gonna actively trade Solana this week just purely because it's where uh, activity is taking place. I mean, it's got more trades going through and more volume than Bitcoin and ETH right now, so. There you go. That's all I need to want to trade it. I really like that scanner. It's free. He doesn't charge anything. Can I donate to him? Uh, I'm sure he. <laughs> I'm sure he's not going to resist a, a donation. So yeah. Because I, I think that I need to give away money now while we're midstream before I forget. True. So I'm going to write down a number between one and forty-five on a piece of paper. Um. Oh, there's 50 people now. All right, I'll write down a number between 1 and 60. And I'm going to give everybody one minute to guess what the number is going to be. So start guessing, ladies and gentlemen. You have one minute starting now. And whoever gets it right, I'll start the timer. I'm going to hold it up. Hope oh, that's an hour. That's not one minute. Stopwatch. All right. I've written down... Holy shit, somebody already guessed it, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> should I let it keep going for the minute or should I just announce the winner? Because that was way too fast. I mean, I guess if you're min-maxing it if you just go ahead and say it now. Because Oh my god. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I see a guy even saying multiple numbers. We got some cheating. Yeah, no, no, no. You can't. Well, I mean, I'll just take the first. I mean, it was, it was, it was said already. So uh all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I wrote down the number. Um, what's his name? I gotta scroll up because it was so fucking quick. Aditya Takur, you win. It's fucking three. However, however fast that was, I, it was three. So DM me on Twitter. Um, if you signed up on Femex, it's two hundred dollars. If not, it's a hundred dollars. So uh, drop me a USDT address, and I'll send you your money. Congratulations, that was way too quick. Not as fun. I might have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> i think next time i'll give away like an nft or something that's more that's more fun but um what do you have on the s p here show me oh yeah i, I didn't really run this down i'm kind of the s p is kind of boring just because i've like been going over the same thesis for forever with it um, i can do the quick rundown on it um 
So basically, we've just been, you know, betting on lower highs continuing to form. All right. So we got lower high one, two, and the fourth one just came through. Um, I I called it and didn't trade it at all. The classic uh, the classic bullshit. I did that uh, the other day. Damn. Yeah. So basically, we're expecting it to basically do this type of formation, come down, build a range, and expand up to the lower high. Um, in this instance, we got... A, I know it maybe doesn't look that clear of price action, but we're going to make it look clear here in a second by drawing some lines. So we came down, uh, got our sweep, and you know we broke out of the range, retested the range, formed another range up here. And I tweeted about this that you know we come up, form another range, um, reject from the range, and then you know the plans are basically this from here, right? Um, number one, most likely, which is what we're probably getting, is the rejection from the range low come back to macro um, comp low of 35 and a half roughly. So I think that this is pretty obviously where we're going to go next. Uh, alternatively, I could be wrong, which would look like us getting through this. So if we get through 39, um, we're probably trading higher and making a fresh local high. Um, but you know, so basically a range low is going to be in validation on this. Um, but yeah, I think we trade low. Um, and then from there, so that's the most likely scenario is coming back to this low over here. Um, and then I'm going to be trying to run this back turbo again, right? I've been able to run this play a couple times now. Um, so I think we're going to do the same thing, come back, form a range. Ideally, we get lucky and get this kind of sweep because it'll be really obvious then. Range, sweep, come back into the range. And then from there, um, we have two scenarios. One's in the fifth lower high, which is for sure the, the highest probability scenario. And then you could also have like a fresh high. Um, so most likely is lower high probably comes up into like 39, 38 and forms a lower high um, to be the whatever it would be, fifth consecutive lower high in the trend. Alternatively, you could bounce from this um, to actually make, you know, the start of a fresh trend. Technically, this could be a legitimate like local low where we trade up big from it. But betting on lower high and trend continuation is always higher probability just because you're leaning into the existing trend so that's pretty much yeah tldr of s and i don't actively trade it right now but i always use it um as confluence for what i should be thinking about crypto and i am going to actively trade this this year on uh, on futures are you trading metals not really uh i know that everybody's horned up on them i used to trade metals a lot um bef like before i really went down the crypto rabbit hole i was like the silver guy like my first big trade in my life was on silver, which is hilarious because it was like silver went from like 13 to $19 or something. And that was like my biggest trade in my life. And now you look at crypto stuff and it's just like, why did I ever trade that? But yeah, I mean, I, I like the the value proposition of investing in them um, more like higher time frame, you know, DCs or whatever. You want to hold silver for a long time. I like that. But uh, I'm not super interested in like actively trading them. We, instead of talking, I have no experience doing it. Instead of talking shit for the last fucking hour, we should have been scalping soul. Look at it, dude. <laughs> Incredible. But um, I am very similar in my ways. I accept thought that buying a bunch of silver spot, like as in physical silver and physical gold, was the move. <laughs> like paying the the dealer's premium and, and such. Um, yeah, look at this thing. Yeah, look at how much open interest went up off of Hasaka's tweet. Yeah, I told you, the bro. The, the, the Hasaka tweet is like the ultimate confluence on a trade. Like, don't use it to open a trade, but use it to 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 further your narrative every time. Right, because his tweet's gonna come. It's gonna come late relative to the yes, move. yes. So there's nothing more comforting than entering a position. And then checking Twitter and seeing him, and then checking the position again and seeing it up another few points and being like, ah, the classic. In all this honesty, thing, though, I almost always start closing out trades into his tweets when they come. Yeah, like I'm gonna if I was in this long, I would be closing this out in the next thirty minutes, probably. So, probably to anybody long. that is gonna try to fade this, what advice would you give them? Don't, don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. fuck no, you, hell no. Um, you guys got to account for it. Doesn't have anything to do with like what the actual value proposition of Solana is, right? It has nothing. These intermediate, these inter intraday price movements have nothing to do with what its real value is. It's all about liquidity and who's getting run over. And so shorts are getting run over right now in an run illiquid over. market. It's not gonna just like. Is it the only th way that this thing just turns around is if it actually does one of the like liquidation events where it like wicks up to fifteen dollars and then it like V's down. Otherwise, 
the only like and this represents unhealthy price structure right you should never wick up and wick down through, through you know, like all these ticks right um how healthy structure is is that it should round off so as it chops up it should slowly start to the impulse is up should slowly start to get weaker until it starts to round off uh and at this looking at this let's delete all this shit off my screen make it full screen too so you can see more easily this does not look like it's rounding off yet guys and maybe if i zoom out more i mean no this thing keeps going up yeah for sure it's probably gonna blow off at some point today if it does what i just said though where all of a sudden it goes up you know literally a huge amount it goes up 20 percent in a minute like that is where you fade it right because that's almost certainly somebody big is puking their shorts and all the liquidations are coming in but it's the simple argument of uh inefficient versus efficient price structure i don't fade in i don't fade what looks like more efficient structuring which is this as it looks pseudo healthy where it's chopping up um the only thing i would aggressively fade are things that have lost momentum, which this obviously hasn't. And then the inefficient moves where it just yeets up. If it wants to do this, I might try to catch a backside short or something, yeah. you know, but outside of that, you know, we just, we just play trend continuation. If this thing does a pullback, you long it for more upside. Like that's how you play this. It's just, it's the, the already pumper meme, which is something that Hasaka is famous for, right? Already pumper. Um, it already pumped. So I must short it. But no, guys, you must do the opposite. It already pumped, so you wait for it to sell off a little bit, and then you buy it. That's how you play this. I have to pull up a chart really quick because I totally forgot that I had, I wanted to talk about this. I should have noted it. Last stream, I uh, or two streams ago, I like saw this setup with um, Smokey. And I remember talking about when I had like set the RR tool and all that jazz. I was like, there's a very high chance that 120 doesn't get hit. And um, I was explaining to my viewers that whenever I do trade, I'll normally scale out to my actual TP. And then on top of that, um, I'll probably mark it out before it actually ever hits my TP for several reasons. Um, one, it's like a psychological thing that I that happens with me that like just makes me feel better that I'm out of that position. And if it does go against me, then I'm going to be very upset. And this is like the perfect example. I think it missed my take profit by fucking several points i actually flat, flat out to 120 um but i marketed this out i think like a cent before it uh, topped out um so you can see that that would happen very often um and to hedge yourself you should probably just scale out like have several orders uh waiting to get out of that position um this also happened to matic on another trade that i was in i don't know if i still have it up but um never be hard set on a tp or you're going to get into some very frustrating positions yes that's the the ta is a meme lesson yeah guys your your magic our little lines and stuff i know that when you look at your chart it looks like they work but you got to understand that ta is a meme in some sense and my argument would be that we use these little lines to have an expectation of where price could go and have an idea yeah. of what it will look like when we're wrong but you need to be dynamic in your levels and i never like draw a level and say this is where I want to take profit and then refuse to take profit prior to it. Yeah. It's all about for me paying attention to the momentum on the move. And once the momentum gets lost, it's over. And I just look for a new trade normally. So this a lot is, of the time I front run my take profits by a lot. This is what I had for Matic. That same exact thing happened like a few months ago in November where it was like just cents away from my take profit. And I was like, Oh, it's time to market out of this position. Like it's gone up faster than I expected it to, to the area at which I would take profit. Um, it's time to get out. And it, I did, I closed it like right before it fucking drew down within a day or two. Um, so whenever I see an explosive move occur faster than I originally had expected it to, I'm like, all right, that does not look healthy. It's time to get the fuck out of it. hundred percent. But, and like, if you're slow to react guys to another useful lesson, let's say you're slow to react and all, and it retraces back down to like 120 or whatever. And you're like, fuck, I didn't get my extra couple percentage points out of this trade. You know, I gave it back. Stop coping about that shit and just fucking close it out. Yeah. Right. It doesn't actually matter that much. Yeah. Just take I've, fucking w. I've never cried. Oh, that's such a shame. I just pulled up an FTM chart. 
<laughs> I didn't take that trade. Thank the Lord. I think somebody else on uh, stream had asked me a few days ago, but somebody just asked again, can you check FTM, please? Uh, that would have frustrated me extremely, um, but it's something yeah. that I would have anticipated. No, I would, I, there's no way I would have caught that. I would have probably been stopped out and been like, fuck it, I'm not re-entering this and moved on from it. But as you would see, it's just like another lower high. I didn't even... If I was smarter, I would have probably waited for something like this, but I'm can't silly. believe this is a 20 cent token now. I remember I was trading it and it was like several dollars at one point. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's funny. This I one remember. got brutalized out of all the layer ones. This in the Harmony Network. I mean, those are some of the ones that got brutalized. And near, near protocol yeah, near went too, to zero. For sure. There's all the fucking Barry all coins. That is true. There are berry coins, and also they were late to the layer one cycle. Yeah. A lot of the other layer ones already had these gargantuan cycles prior to the near and uh, and harmony and stuff showing up. Also, harmony had no value proposition outside of DeFi kingdoms. It was just a garbage chain to use in general. I had a lot of bad experiences on harmony, including getting hacked. Actually, you got hacked on harmony. I did. What happened? <laughs> I don't want to like say every little detail about it, but in short, um, I absolutely slayed DeFi kingdoms, just rinsed everybody that tried to trade against me apparently. Cause I, 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 I knew that that thing wasn't going to keep going up. So I dumped on people. Um, and then, yeah, I, I left way too much money on the chain. I took like half of the profits off and then I was just like, yeah, it'll be fine over there. Cause I had gotten so comfortable with using all these, keeping stable and all, stables on all these different chains. I know some other people can relate. We got also got so comfortable with having stables on soul and AVAX and having stables on all these chains. I was just like, fuck it. I'll just keep this money over here. Well, I went back and checked on it one day and <laughs> it was gone. And uh, yeah, it was related to DeFi kingdoms. I'm pretty sure. Do you trade NFTs at all? I mean, no, I mean, like, have I traded NFT? Do I own some? Yeah, I've I fucked about with it, but do I like do it seriously? Not at all. I always made the argument that I don't like something that has like the 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 how do I word it? The illiquidity on the exit, right? That you have to you can only exit passively, and you have to have somebody come and take from you um, in order to exit. You know, I, I mostly use passive orders anyways, but I like the idea of if I'm in a shit coin, I can just dump it whenever I want. So I, I, really, I strayed away from NFTs for that exact reason. I have to say when I first started trading NFTs, I was so excited because it was such an inefficient market that had such a similar structure to like the bucket shop days where like you, it was literally PVP and you just had a counterparty that had to come scoop it off your hands and there's nothing more rewarding than when somebody would scoop it off your hands in an incredible profit and you were like holy shit i won that and you're just like wow that's done you know um my first nft trade was the like one of my best trades and that's what why it was it got me hooked i, I bought like an avid lines for i think three or five ETH in 2020 and I sold it for, or no, 2021 maybe. And I sold it for like 17 ETH a day later. And I was what? like, holy shit. I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, at the end of the day, I ended up losing six figures trading NFTs, but um, I had a lot of fun. You know, it was, it was a fun PVP time, but I don't trade NFTs anymore. I'll just like, I don't even touch most DeFi shit. And I think that the bid is coming back on NFTs and I don't want to admit it, but I just did for the first time. Um, yeah, it could be short lived though. Who knows? It will. I think it'll be like the twenty in 2017, 2018 cycle, uh, December, January. You kind of had the majors top off, and then you had an extreme illiquid run in a bunch of bullshit alts. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be a very similar stru like structure where you're going to see uh, like illiquid shit, inefficient markets that you know follow in in the wave, and it's the NFTs this time. Um, I'm not positioning for it. I refuse. So yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll add that I do think that there is definitely juice to be squeezed at an NFT market. Yeah. Like the, you, the point you made, it's it's got to be the most inefficient market in crypto for sure yeah. is the NFTs. Uh, I have a good friend who's like one of my mentors actually, and he uh, he runs a, a shop that market makes um, Solana NFTs, and uh, the risks are enormous. Um, but the upside is also enormous too. Um, so it, it, you know, if it's your thing, it, it, it could be worth it. It's just not my thing, unfortunately. Yeah. And I mean, there's money to be made at the end of the day. Like it's very inefficient 
And yeah. day by day, it becomes more efficient. You have like all these protocols that are aggregating liquidity, and you know sooner or later there's going to be market makers, and they're going to drop perps for. They actually ships. already are market makers. There you go. Surprised. That's what my friend does. They they literally market make soul NFTs, and they so, the PNL on it like is assuming no swan events come and crush them. Like it's a pretty good business model. But the thing is, is that the risks. Like this is why I was telling him I wasn't trying to you know, rain on his parade or anything, but the risks, it's just like, there's so many risks, like, and you can't account for any of them. Right. Cause they, yeah. a lot of the risks might not even exist today, you know? Yeah. So that shit scares me personally. I agree. Magus, I actually have to head out of here. It's 11 o'clock. I try not to go for over an hour, but I specifically have a tomorrow I'm driving to actually, I'm going to let everyone know before I go, I'm driving across the fucking country. I bought a car in Washington state. I'm driving it home. I can have it shipped, but I've always wanted to drive across the country. I'm taking advantage of doing it in the worst time possible when half the country is frozen. <laughs> um, so I will still be posting, uh, not just not as much. I am still long on the challenge account. I have not signed into it since our last stream. I think it's long Bitcoin from like 16.8. Um, Magus, if you don't know, I opened the challenge account for... Uh, people on Femex, it's like it was a five thousand dollar account. It's up ten percent. I'm being super slow with it day by day. I actually don't even trade it as I should. Um, but it's long. I think I think it's long Bitcoin. I don't think it got stopped out. I can check. Um, I should probably be more responsible because I told you guys I would try to trade publicly on it, but it's just not fun to trade right now. Yeah. Are you gonna <laughs> vlog the road trip? Yeah, I'm gonna like mostly on my Instagram and. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some fucked up shit that happens along the way. And that's always when the adventure begins. Um, so I'll definitely, I'll definitely post a video of it. Um, I'm bringing my buddy who also doesn't work a nine to five. So it'll be funny. Um, I was surprised how entertaining your vlogs were, man. Like your YouTube I appreciate control pretty that. small because I think it's newer, but um, I like started watching them and all of a sudden I watched all of them before I do. Like, that makes me so happy. <laughs> I really, I really hope so. I've never, um, I always like made videos as a child and like growing up, but only recently I was like, man, I should try to monetize this. Like there's a way to do this and I know people are doing it. So why not do it? And sure, I tried man. to do Somebody like, else you know, is going to do it if you don't, you know what I yeah. mean? So <clears throat> I'm having fun with it. And if you're anywhere in the U S along my route home and you want to grab a coffee, um, let me know. I'm linking up with a bunch of CT guys like dime, I'm not going to say where he is. I think people know where he is, but um so i'll be saying hi to a bunch of people along the route that could be fun so let me know okay yeah let's have a conversation about that off stream because i might yeah be yeah just uh let just send me your address right now on stream <laughs> with your full name. let's post it let's get a social security number in there too and i'll come by um but yes i gotta go thank you so much for coming on magus i had a ball i don't know if you did but you leaked a bunch yeah, of yeah i always enjoy myself doing these things good um everyone thanks for tuning in i'll try to give away some more money for fun uh i did yeah i got your dm i'll answer it as soon as i end this powered by femex if you're not trading on femex then you're a bad person and probably a commie and you should sign up to trade on femex too um thanks for coming once again you guys have a wonderful day take it easy